Hey, great to be with you again. Man, I hope you're, uh, you're doing well. Um, I just I had a question to kind of start today off that I thought would be maybe a little bit fun. How many of you would classify yourself as a natural planner? You know what I mean by a natural planner? It's somebody you have everything all planned. Yeah, maybe I could say this. You've got all your Christmas presents already bought. And uh, you've planned out exactly what you're going to have for everybody. You probably have already got the menu already planned out for Christmas dinner. You probably know where everybody's going to be. You know what you're going to have. Uh, what's the main dish? What's the desserts? Where everybody's going to sit? How you're going to set the table? You got that already planned out in your head, and you may be even getting some of those things already put together. Now, <clears throat> kind of in our house, Esther is kind of the planner. She has things organized. She has things planned. I am more uh, fly by your seat of your pants, you know, like last minute kind of thing. Uh, it, it always seems to work out, but there's not a lot of planning put into like it. There's planning, but I, I don't get worried about stuff. And, uh, so some of us, we have everything all planned out and I don't think there's anybody that doesn't have your life planned out. We kind of think in our head, and especially if you start getting my age, you're trying to plan out like, uh, you know, how do I end well? Um, am I going to be able to retire? Where am I going to retire? Will I have enough money to still have the same quality of life that I had while I was working? And you're trying to plan those things out. And I think each one of us plans out certain things in our lives. We, we plan that this is the way this day is going to go, or this is the way this year is going to go, or my life is going to go. And nothing can rattle us more that all of a sudden there's a change in the plans that we had made. Maybe you uh, have just gone through, uh, you know, a marriage or a wedding, and you had everything all planned only to find out that the hall... Uh, couldn't be rented. Hey, we got COVID. COVID's just one of the greatest plan destroyers that you could ever get. One minute you could have this many people coming to a function. Next minute you got this many people coming. Next minute they got to be six feet apart. Next minute they could sit beside each other. Next week you got to have a mask. Next week, like COVID is drove, just drove people crazy over planning. You, you just kind of get to the point. Why bother planning? It's just going to get all mucked up. And the reality that comes is so many of us are, are probably hurting, and I don't think there's any denying that we have been crushed with the mindset uh, that we had everything planned out and then all of a sudden it didn't work out. Maybe you were that person that was had that job and you thought, this is the job I'm going to retire in, uh, only to find out you got laid off. And now you're scrambling around at an older age trying to find a job. Uh, maybe you're that person that, uh, you know, thought you would, you'd be fine. And all of a sudden you find out you have medical problems. And all of a sudden now your plans to be able to do things have been, been changed. Maybe you had plans that certain people were going to be at, uh, at your house for Christmas and now something's happened. There was, there was a change in plans. There was an argument. There was a fight. Uh, somebody made different plans where they were going. So many times we find that when we start making plans and nothing wrong with making plans, we need to have plans in our life, that many times our plans are changed on us. Uh, things get changed and it really starts to uh, shake us. It, it doesn't only shake the event that we were going to do, but it literally shakes maybe our faith. Maybe you find yourself all of a sudden going, where are you, God, in this situation? Here I thought, you know, I'm coming to the end of my life. Uh, I'm enjoying life. I'm planning on going on vacation. And all of a sudden, uh, somebody in your family or maybe even yourself got sick and you couldn't do it. You'd never planned ending your life the way you're ending it right now. And maybe you're sitting there right now saying, I thought I was going to be married, have three kids, have that cre real cute little house with a picket fence and everything else. And now you're sitting all by yourself in a gear to income home. Uh, you kind of go like, where's God? Why isn't God? What did I do wrong? Well, let me help you in this Christmas season, hopefully, 
with a couple of things. And one is I want to look at the story of Mary and Joseph because they're just like us. They're just normal kids uh, that had plans for their life. And all of a sudden their plans went sideways. And how did they handle it? How did they get through it? And what can we learn from them? If you've got your Bibles, Matthew chapter 1 and and uh, chapter 2, uh, tell us the whole story. Also, you can go to Luke chapter 1, chapter 2 in Luke, and you can get the whole story. I'm not going to go through all that. I'm going to highlight on a couple of verses. But if you want to take time to read those stories to your family or to yourself uh, after we're done here, you'll be able to think. If, if we're thinking about it, uh, we really understand that this story uh, really depicts a lot of things going on. Here's the way this story kind of starts as we're, we're reading about it. If we were to try and summarize, and, and that's what we're going to try and do, this whole story, and that's what uh, the writer in the Bible did. He summarized their whole story uh, of Mary and Joseph into uh, you know a few paragraphs. If I were to say to you, hey, tell me what this last year has been like in a paragraph. You would leave out some very important things to try and just hit, hit on the main highlights. And that's what the writer in the Bible did in these chapters. Uh, but maybe today, well, let your imagination go. I, I've got a great imagination and uh, maybe we just uh, let our imagination go and kind of fill in a couple areas. So the big question that comes is, how did Mary and Joseph meet? It doesn't say nothing in the Bible, but they had to have met. And where did they met? Maybe they ended up, you know, Mary with her girlfriends. They were all hanging out at the house and they all of a sudden said, hey, you know what? Youth group is going on at the synagogue. Let's go to the youth group and check out what's going on there. And one of the girls probably said, yeah, and you know what? There's that really cute Joseph guy there. Maybe we can spend a little time and get to know him. He's kind of cute, muscular. And uh, I don't know if you understand this, but he's got a job. And he's got money. And he's got a brand new donkey. And maybe we can go cruising up and down uh, the boulevard and check out the bagel stands or whatever they did in those days. But they had to meet sometime. And, and in that... They, they probably did meet each other. And, you know, and all of a sudden Mary's looking over and saying, wow, you know what, Joseph, he's a really handsome looking guy. And she starts to watch him and listen how he talks and how he respects people. And all of a sudden starts going, man, I kind of I kind of like this guy. And he sees her and realizes that she's cute. She's very polite. She's really fun to be around. And he finally gets up his courage to maybe ask her to go out for, uh, you know, I don't know what they drank in those days, but maybe, you know, a cup of coffee or a bagel or, or a tea and a bagel, whatever they did. But they went out for a date and, and they got to know each other. And eventually they got to the point where uh, he invited her back to meet his parents and she invited him to meet her parents and the parents liked him and everything went well. And maybe, you know, he was able to, uh, you know, save up a few bucks and he bought her a little, a little gift, like a, a stuffed donkey or something like that. And, she had that as a gift from him and things were moving really good and they were really enjoying and having lots of laughs and sharing a lot of personal things with one another and just building up a relationship. And then all of a sudden he started to save up his money so that he could eventually buy her a ring. And he asks her to marry him. And she says yes. I mean, it's, it's really kind of cool. We don't do, we don't hear about it, but all those things had to go on. And, you know, like, uh, how did he propose to her? I don't know. Like, did he put it in a box, the ring in a box of something that he made in the workshop? Did he do something really creative? You know, where did he tell her? You know, was it by the river that he was down on one knee and asked her to marry him? But we understand that she agreed and I guaranteed when she ran home and she showed the ring to her mom and her dad, right away her mom's mind started to go, okay, we need to start planning the wedding. And they started probably getting all the ideas and they started figuring out who are we going to invite to this wedding and what's going to happen and all these different things. And things started to get crazy because they were crazy in love with one another and they started planning out their life. They were probably, two of them were probably talking, where are we going to get a home? 
Where are we, where, how are we going to gather up the money to get a place? How many children should we have? Are you going to work, uh, Mary, or are you going to stay home and look after the kids? What's going to go on? They, they started planning out all these things. You know, we can't get away with that old donkey you had. We've got to get a bigger donkey because we're going to have more kids. And if they're all sitting on that donkey, we've got to get an SUV donkey, you know, or we've got to get a, you know, like a Lincoln or something. We've got to get something that's an SUV that's got lots of room for all the kids and Hey, we talked about this last week, all the luggage that you got to take. And the reality is they were starting to plan. They were planning where we're going to be. They were planning for the future like many of us do. They were looking to do what's going to come. They were making plans just the same as what us. And one day, all of a sudden, Mary has an encounter with God. An angel appears to her and the angel tells her, you've been chosen, you're going to give birth to a son. Whoa, here she is, this angel shows up, that's the first thing. You know, because you know in angel school they teach everybody, every angel says when they show up, fear not. You know, because everybody gets freaked out when an angel shows up in the room. But the reality that comes, this angel tells her that she's going to have a child. Well, right away, you got to figure out where her head is. She's just got engaged. And we know one thing that both Scripture told us, that Mary and Joseph had decided not to be intimate until they got married. So all of a sudden, this angel's telling her she's going to have a son, and her mind's going, wow, that's kind of cool. Well, when Mary and, when Joseph and I get married... And we have that honeymoon night. Maybe I can start painting the room blue because this angel has prophesied that we're going to have a son. But he wasn't really talking about Joseph being the dad. He was talking about a little bit more than that. But she's wired. She's excited. You know, if you saw an angel, you'd be going to talk to some people. And she goes running into Joseph. And Scripture doesn't really tell us, but it's, it's definitely had to have happened. That all of a sudden she goes running in to the room where Joseph is, where he's working. And he's maybe, uh, you know, he's sawing something or he's hoeing something or he's chiseling on something. And she comes running in and says, Joseph, you cannot believe it. We are going to have a son. I just had an angel show up. And an angel told me we're going to have a son. And it's going to be the Son of God. And uh, I'm pregnant. Now, let's take a vote. Is Joseph excited about this news, or is he going to freak out? Okay, if you think he's excited, put up your hand. If you think he's freaking out, put up a different hand. i got to believe it. Almost every one of you is probably putting up your hand. He's freaking out. He's probably going... You're pregnant by the Holy Ghost? Sure, it's the Holy Ghost. You, who is it? Let me know who it is. I want to take him out. I, I, like, let me find out what guy got you pregnant. And if you got your Bibles with you, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 says this. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. They were engaged. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Before they had become intimate. Basically saying, Joseph is not the father of this child. All of a sudden, verse 19 kind of shows his response. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, he followed the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace because to be pregnant bef before you're married and not to have it be your, your fiancé, your husband, was a disgrace in that time. He had in mind to divorce her, okay, quietly. He was going to divorce her quietly. So Joseph is crushed. His heart is broken. Here's the girl that he has told everything to, girl that he is in love with, the girl that he wants to marry. He has his plans of his future with her, and now he finds out that she's pregnant, and he has to divorce her. Yeah, maybe you heard that, that, that word divorce, and it didn't really make sense. Pastor, you just got finished telling me that uh, they weren't married. Why are they getting divorced? Well, in the culture of that day, if even if you were engaged and you wanted to break off an engagement, you had to be divorced. That's how you had to do it. There had to be a divorce. And you got to understand, probably all the wedding invitations were out. 
All the mailings were out. Uh, Joseph probably had already picked his best man and the guys that were standing up. This was going to be public humility for both of them. And, and he was trying to hide this as much as he could. But the reality is for an engagement to be broken off, there had to be an official divorce. And that divorce meant that you were pushed aside, you were, you were pushed out of the way. Luke 1 verse 38 says, May it be done unto me according to your word, is what, what Mary said to the angel. Whatever God wants to do, if I'm going to be the mother of Jesus, then let it be. She is saying this, but now her life has been totally turned. She said, okay, I'll change my plans for you. But now she didn't realize how much. She was going to be pregnant without a husband. She was going to be divorced as a single mom. She, she was not going to be able to work. She was going to have to support them herself. And the way to support them was probably to beg on the side of the streets. Joseph, probably in himself, was going through so many emotions. He loved her, but he couldn't have anything to do with her. And I got to believe they were both saying, this isn't what I planned. God, I, I didn't do anything to really cause what's going is happening to me. How can you allow this to happen to me? And this is exactly where some of you might be feeling right now. God, why am I having sickness in my home? Why did I, I have no job? Why is my family being torn apart? Why is my finances so, so bad? This is not what I planned. I had it all planned. This was going to be a great Christmas. I was going to have money for gifts for everyone. But then my car broke down and I had to drop a thousand dollars into a repair job. And now I don't even know how I'm going to pay for the meals. I got a new job and I thought it was going to be a job that was going to give me a promotion, but realized that there were cutbacks with everything going on with COVID. And you know what the deal is? Last in, first out. I was the last hired, so I'm going to be the first that is fired. This wasn't what I had planned. The list could go on and on of all the things that we planned that have got sidetracked and gone sideways. I didn't plan having these things. I didn't plan having a migraine. I didn't plan battling depression in my life. I didn't plan on battling cancer or having family members going through difficult times. It wasn't my plan. I want to leave you with something <clears throat> that I hope can help you a bit. I want to leave this with you. You don't have to understand the plan to trust God that he has a purpose. You don't have to understand the plan to trust that God has a purpose. Proverbs 19 verse 21, Proverbs 19 21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose to prevail. He prevails. You don't have to understand the plan to trust God. He has a purpose in everything in our lives. Mary and Joseph's plans were turned upside down. In fact, in, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, we read about Joseph. He had no choice but to divorce her. But that wasn't his plan. That He was planning on having a family, having children. Verse 20 goes on, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is, is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Everything that Mary had said was true. And God prevailed. Even, even though the plans weren't the way they wanted to be, God never leaves you. If your plans are not the way they were, know this today. God is still there. God has still got a purpose. God is still going to get you through. She sent an, he sent an angel to, to Joseph to help walk this through. There was a purpose here. She will give birth, in verse 21, he, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Can you hear Joseph saying, God is in this. Here I thought she was just, you know, just sticking out crazy stuff. She had fooled around and just made this up or whatever. And now this God, but God is in this. God is going to make it. God says it's okay for me to have her. Even though I'm trying to follow the laws, God says it. 
You're telling me there is a purpose in the middle of my pain? Yes, I am telling you there is a purpose in the middle of all of these plans that you have that seem to be going the wrong way, in the hurts that you have. And I'm saying to you, hang on. Don't give up. Look into those changes of direction and look for what God wants to do. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our, our ways. They, his ways are higher than ours. And even though we may not feel that he is working in all things to bring good to those who love him, we are called according to his purpose. God may redirect your plans. He has a way of turning what the enemy tries to bring evil and turn it into good. Mary and Joseph are pregnant with a son, which would really kind of throw things into a whole kilter here. Uh, Mary's pregnant. Guess where we find her, ladies? She is on the back of a donkey while she's pregnant, having to go to another location to have the baby. She's in labor, if you can believe this. And Joseph, man, he's lucky he lived to see his son be doing these kinds of, because he didn't even make a reservation for a place for her to have her baby. She ends up in a cave right beside all these farm animals and she's having birth. And there's no midwife. There's no little uh, bathtub to have your baby in and all these unique little things that we're doing now to have children. She is doing it all natural. And she gets through having this baby, which is unbelievable. She gets through all that as a young girl. She's only around 13, 14 years old. And all of a sudden, she gets through all of this. No mother, no midwife, no nothing like this. And what does she hear? That there is a crazy king called Herod who is now looking to kill her son. She just get this baby into her arms. And now she hears that there's a guy coming to kill my baby. And so now, all of a sudden, they need to saddle up. There's no break. There's no chance to, to have a baby shower. There's no chance to go show the baby to all your friends. There's no chance of putting the baby on, on Facebook and take all the photo pictures. She has to climb back up on a donkey and Joseph and her head to Egypt because they're running for their lives. But God has not forgot them. The, the Magi or the wise men show up and they bring gifts about a year after. In that period of time, a year to two years after, they show up. And that is when Herod starts getting the news and starts coming to look for him. And the reality to kill all the firstborn children that were two years of age and younger. So in that two years, they show up. And what do they bring? They bring gifts. And one of those gifts is gold. Nothing better than if you have to run for your life to be able to have the money to be able to go. Isn't it something 33 years later, all of a sudden Mary is found standing, watching her baby hanging on a cross, giving his life for us. He is whipped. He is nailed. The only thing that's holding him is he spikes in his wrists and in his heels. They say he was whipped so bad that his back was tore apart and in fact you couldn't even recognize him. He was bruised and he was wounded for our iniquities. And here she is and what does she say? God, it's not fair. I planned my son to become a carpenter. I planned my son to grow up and, and I, I planned him to get married and have grandkids and for me to just be great. And now I stand and I watch as he dies on a cross even though he is innocent and never did anything wrong. And she hears him say, it is finished. And he gives his life over to his heavenly father. Mary falls to her knees, probably crying out, not my baby. This was not my plan. Mary and Joseph had a plan, but God had a purpose. So what was the purpose that shifted this whole plan? What was the purpose? Well, many today would say that the reason for the season is Jesus. Maybe we could change that saying to this, which I think is more true. The true thing, the reason for the season is you and me. We're the reason Jesus came. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We are the reason for this Christmas season. We are the reason that Jesus came. We are the reason that the plan changed. 
Because God had a purpose. So what can I say? If you're one of those who's had a change of plans and things are difficult, I'm not going to tell you that it's not going to be painful. I'm not going to tell you it doesn't hurt. I'm not going to tell you that I understand why it's happening and that you're going to stop crying. But I am going to tell you God wants you to keep going on. I'm telling you right now, because of God's goodness and because He is a good God and because He loves you and He cares about you, you need to know that He understands the plan. And He has a plan for you. And you need to trust God. And He has a purpose. On this Christmas season, as we talk about the birth of Jesus, please understand Mary and Joseph were people just like us who had a plan. But thanks to God, he had a purpose and his purpose included you and me by being able to find him as Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me? Because many of us have probably had plans that are going astray. Maybe you're right in the middle of that. Jesus, today I pray for those that are hurting, those that are confused, those that are grieving. That they will put their faith in you, Jesus. They will recognize the purpose you have for them and for their plans is bigger than what they imagine. Help us to trust you in these times. Even when we don't understand where we're going and what's happening, I trust you that something good is going to come out of it. Maybe today you realize that Jesus came for you. Maybe you're realizing right now that you are the reason for the season, but you have never asked Jesus to come into your life as Lord and Savior. And I would encourage you right now, right where you are, if you've never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, you would take a moment right now, right where you're sitting, to say, Jesus, I am a sinner. That's why Jesus was born to a virgin, because he didn't inherit the sinful life that he would have if he had a human. And literally, we have all been born into sin, but we can right now, you can ask Jesus to forgive you of sin and come into your life. Just ask him, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. Come into my life. Lord, I ask you to be my strength and let me see the purpose of your plan when my plans get shifted sideways. In Jesus' name, amen.